So now we have determined what the term FDP actually means and to which, you know, physiological metric or more scientific metric it actually relates to. However, we didn't answer the question yet, what are the mechanisms which create your threshold power? So what determines if an intensity is sustainable in terms of you don't see in a rapid uh, accumulation of fatigue or fatigue metrics like lactate as an indicator versus an intensity which you know will result in fatigue in a relatively short time hence showing an increase in lactate concentration so going back to fdp is the approximation of the maximum lactate steady state of the highest power output you can sustain without accumulated lactate, we need to understand how this lactate concentration that either is stable or increases is actually produced. How, you know, how is that created? And that's pretty simple. The lactate concentration that you can see in the blood that, is, that you can actually measure if you want, obviously is derived or is based on a certain lactate production. That should be pretty intuitive to understand that if you measure a concentration of lactate in the blood and maybe it goes up, there has to be a production of lactate where it comes from. And this is happening in an anaerobic metabolism, which is more precisely the glycolysis, that's what it's called. So that should be, you know, again, pretty easy to understand. For some people, it is, however, kind of new that there's also a lactate combustion happening simultaneously and this is happening in the aerobic metabolism. This is happening all the time, right? And think about it, think about you do a hard interval training and you accumulate lactate in the interval. Uh, you know, think about a classic, whatever, view to max so-called intervals, four minutes. What would happen if in between the intervals you rest, you just stay idle? Um, how would the next interval, you get up and do the next interval, how would that feel like? But, most likely not very good. Legs would feel pretty heavy. Why? Because in the recovery, in between those intervals, you decreased your aerobic system, you decreased the oxygen uptake, you decreased heart rate, you decreased the amount of fuel your oxygen, your oxygen system, your aerobic system can burn. And therefore you reduce the ability to combust the lactate which you just have accumulated in the effort. So. This already is the non-scientific, non-chemical explanation, which you know you can test for yourself in your training, why lactate is combusted in zero metabolism. You can also say lactate is burned. And if you like this explanation more or better, in this universe, if you want to burn anything, you always need oxygen. So you need to have the aerobic system to combust lactate. And these two, the lactate production, so how much lactate is produced, and on the other hand, how much is combusted, these two create the concentration. So these two will determine if lactate concentration stays stable, hence you are below or at FDP, or if lactate concentration will increase as a marker of you know, uh, fatigue and will lead to exhaustion sooner or later, hence you're exercising above FDP. So, Lactate concentration or the maximum lactate steady state, which is what FDP is trying to approximate, is determined by lactate production and lactate combustion. However, understanding how a lactate concentration is created in the first place does not really explain the mechanisms that create FDP, the physiological reasons. So in order to understand this, the last piece of the puzzle is to understand how the combustion of lactate and the production of lactate change when you change the power output. So that's what we're going to look at now. Let's start with the lactate combustion. So when you increase the power output from a low power output to a high power output, or a running speed if you want, what is basically happening with the aerobic metabolism and therefore with the ability to combust lactate, it is more or less increasing linear. At the end, this may be leveling off a little bit, but more simplified, it's a more or less linear increase. So this is your aerobic system. Or you could say, therefore, the ability to combust 
lactate, okay? And this is something you can find really everywhere. Just go to Google and look at you know, oxygen uptake, VO2 and incremental tests. Just look at your heart rate and kind of a REM test scenario. All those indicators for aerobic metabolism, you will see there's almost a linear increase. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. So this is your, yeah, this is your ability to combust lactate. The lactate production, however, looks quite different. Lactate production has more like a curved linear shape. So it's, 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 it's very mild increase here. And then at a certain intensity, it shows this exponential increase. So this is lactate production in the anaerobic metabolism. So what you see now, there is this crossing point at which lactate production equals or matches lactate combustion. When you look at intensity below that, you will see that the ability to combust lactate is always higher than the actual production. So there would be no accumulation of lactate concentration in the blood. Therefore, concentration would stabilize. If you look at a power output right from that, you can see that the actual lactate production is always higher than the ability to combust lactate. Therefore, this amount of lactate here, right, the delta that's excess lactate would accumulate in the blood. And that's actually what we've seen in the you know curves of the maximum lactate steady state test, the 30 minutes test. And therefore, the intensity at which production and combustion are equal actually is your functional threshold, FDP, maximum lactate steady state, whatever you want to call it, okay? So, the answer to the original question, what is the physiological origin of your FDP, is the interaction of the lactate combustion, aerobic metabolism, with the glycolytic or anaerobic metabolism. Those two in combination or in concert, if you want, create the power output at your threshold, physiologically speaking. Okay, if you made it this far, you may be asking yourself, okay, that's nice and interesting, but okay, why should I care? Like, how does this affect my training or what can I do with this information? Well, I came up with this example where one athlete, say, has 200 watt threshold, another 300 and 400. So what is different in those athletes? Or what changed with, it, with training? Well, look at this graph. If the FDP, maximum lactate, whatever anaerobic threshold value is created by the combination of these two, the only thing that you can actually change to change your power output is change one or the other or both. So that means if you want to have this crossing point, this power output lower or higher, what you can do is actually, for example, increase the ability to combust lactate. In this case, the crossing point would be further to the right and you basically have a higher power output. Another way to increase your maximum lactate steady state FDP power, whatsoever, whatever you call that, is obviously to decrease the amount of lactate that is produced and also shifting the crossing point further right. Or do both and you increase your power output even further. So long story short, if you want to increase your threshold power, or maybe more precise, every time your threshold power really changes, up or down by training, one of these two systems has adapted, or both, in either way. So this is what determines your threshold power. And this means, for your training, if you want to improve to increase your FDP values, 
you need to either increase your aerobic metabolism, the capacity of aerobic metabolism, or reduce your lactate production, hence what this means basically, you reduce your glycolytic capacity. That's the only way is really how to change your threshold power. No matter if you're a professional athlete, recreational, whatsoever, this is a mechanism, okay? And this is what happens when you change your threshold power by training, and this is what creates your threshold power actually. Hope you liked this video and see you in the next one.